Will interim GM Steve Sullivan of the Arizona Coyotes be able to keep the job? Looks as though the Coyotes are interviewing plenty of other candidates, and we have plenty more NHL trade rumors that have surfaced since yesterday's big trade between the Leafs and the Penguins. We'll jump into all that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as you can see, we're again in beautiful, historic downtown Fredericton, New Brunswick, recording another outdoor video. Uh, as you can see behind me, just down the way here a little bit, we have uh, Marina. And if you flip the camera around here, you'll see our historic walking bridge here behind me on the other side, uh, down by the water here by the St. John Rivers. And I hope you're enjoying these outdoor videos. So for today, as I mentioned, we have some talk about Arizona Coyotes. And of course, as we know, John Chica removed himself as GM of the Coyotes, and they had gone to an interim GM and Steve Sullivan, who had been working with the organization for a long time as an assistant role. Uh, and right now, it looks as though they are exploring plenty of other candidates, and there's no guarantee he's going to be in that role longer term. Now, of course, as we know, the uh, new ownership group there in uh, in Arizona, uh, they seem to have a lot of close ties because they've been uh, Alex Barillo has been in business a long time. There's a lot of good uh, business associates. We'll see. What happens? We know he had some meetings with Taylor Hall uh, without John Chaka before he was released. So he's very involved. So difficult to say who is uh, all going to be interviewed at this point. But I would imagine a lot of the similar candidates that are being interviewed for the Florida Panthers job could also potentially be candidates in Arizona as well. And of course, in Sullivan's case, Elliot Friedman goes on to say here in his latest report that if Sullivan is not given a permanent job in Arizona, he will not have any shortage uh, of opportunity, so he'll be able to continue working in another role, whether it be as an assistant GM or another executive type role with other NHL organizations. Now, of course, as we know, we saw a massive trade yesterday between the Penguins and the Maple Leafs, sending Kasperi Kapanen to Pittsburgh, along with Pontus Aberg and a prospect in return. The Maple Leafs get a first round pick, number 15 overall, and they also get a pretty good prospect in Philip Hallander and uh, forward who can play in the bottom six, possibly Evan. Rodriguez. So I, as I mentioned yesterday, I think this is a, a big win for the Leafs. They get the cap space that they really need. Uh, Kapanen goes to play in Pittsburgh. Hopefully he can elevate a role. And we also get a scenario here where the Leafs get some good future prospects. But based on an uh, interview with Kyle Dewis that took place after the trade, uh, there's certainly fair to say that he is not done. If anything, he is just getting started. Now when it comes to Casper and Kapanen, in case you didn't see the reports, there was reports here that they had talks with about seven or eight other teams including New Jersey, Carolina, uh, Edmonton, Minnesota, Chicago and Anaheim as well. So obviously they wouldn't pay the price that Pittsburgh did which is explains why the, the Penguin deal got done but clearly uh, you know Rutherford really wanted Kapanen to shake up that top six and he paid a hefty price to do so. Now a couple of quotes from Kyle Dubas who certainly confirms that he's far from being done. He does indicate here in his quotes that he says that they need far more cap flexibility. So obviously there's going to be some more moves made to, to accomplish that. And he also said in regards to addressing the blue line that if there's another type of Jake Muzzin player out there that he'd be interested to put it mildly. So clearly the, the Jake Muzzin deals worked out well. Muzzin has been a good defender for the Leafs, but they certainly need more guys back him back there on that blue line. Uh, they don't need another offensive player. They need somebody who can shut down, play physical, and actually defend in their own end because that's something that they're they're lacking outside of Muzzin. They don't have any guys that are really strong at that. So we're going to likely see a very different looking blue line. Barry and CC likely depart via free agency. Of course, as we know, that's a well-documented item here for the Maple Leafs. But a couple of other articles have popped up since the trade, including James Bird of the Athletic, who basically confirms that uh, Kapanen, as we know, is not the only player that the Leafs were shopping. Uh, they also had conversations around Andreas Janssen, and as well as Alex Kerfoot, and even to some degree, Freddie Anderson as well. Now, I know we've talked a lot about the future of Freddie Anderson, and I've seen reports from Pierre Lebrun indicating that they haven't really talked to his camp about an extension as of yet, and they're still trying to feel things out. There was some talk about the Leafs and the Penguins maybe having some conversations around Matt Murray. Of course, we can't confirm if they did discuss Murray or not, but of course, the deal was done without him being included. So you would think right now that more than likely from Toronto's perspective that they're probably not going to go back and make another deal for Murray, but I guess you couldn't completely rule it out with the connection there between Dubas and Murray from the days in Sault Ste. Marie with the Greyhounds 
but certainly the Maple Leafs, like I said, far from done. Clearly looking for more uh, trade chips on the blue line. Certainly looking to dump some more salary and get some much needed flexibility. I think with Kapanen going, it's certainly going to signify that the big four likely do stay together for at least one more year. So not that we saw a big move happening with like Tavares or Matthews, but you could help but wonder if a Marner or Nylander could possibly be traded. And I don't think we can completely 100% say it's not happening, but we did hear Duba say that he wanted to give them another chance. And with them starting to move out uh, some uh, you know lower level players like Kapanen, you can all pretty much confirm that that's likely his desire and hopefully he can find a way to to accomplish that now of course with the return on Kapanen you've got Hollander who's a pretty good prospect could be a player for them somebody who they've apparently had interest in for some time so that works out well to add to their prospect pool but that first round pick may not remain with the Leafs it's quite possible uh, that they could trade it I mean Dubas himself said in his media availability afterwards that uh, they certainly are open to it if the right deal is there obviously the Leafs are trying to win sooner than later so as much as they can use the pick, if they can't find the right trade, they obviously would prefer uh, to get somebody who could help them today. Now, one of the conversations they were having with the teams I mentioned for Kapanen was Carolina, who has shown interest in some of the leap forwards here. And where they hold Maple Leafs first round pick that they gave them in the Marlowe trade, they were trying to get that pick back, but Carolina would not pay that steep of a price. It would not bite, but Rutherford, who's clearly uh, desperately trying to shake things up, certainly had no problem doing so. So there certainly will be enough players on the market, especially on the blue line, who could certainly attract a, a trade option here by giving up that first round pick. It, it wouldn't be a big surprise. I know if you take a look around the NHL, if you look at like the Anaheim, like Josh Banson, even a team like Nashville, who has a, you know a pretty solid blue line and looking for offense, obviously involved in that cap and trade, could be involved with some other deals as well. Obviously, they're another team that could build upon their prospect pool too. So will Kyle Dubas keep that first round pick or will it be traded? And most likely you have to think it'd be for a blue liner. What blue liner do you think they should most likely target to get a good return for this pick? In regards to the Pittsburgh Penguins, we're looking at an article here from the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, looking at some more moves they could be making. Of course, there's interviews with Rutherford after the trade yesterday as well, uh, where he indicated now that they've acquired Kapanen that they kind of see their top six forwards kind of being pretty well set. So clearly you'd have to think, well, Crosby, Malkin are 100% the top two centers. You've got Gensel and Zucker and likely Rust and Kapanen, I would think would make up your four winners that would play in the top six. So the, the Pittsburgh Penguins have had a lot of moving parts in their bottom six, like the Leafs and other teams that have been hired up against the cap here. So you have to think some players like a Patrick Hornquist, Dominic Simon, or Jarrett McCain, even Nick Bukestad, any of those players certainly uh, likely could be available for trade. You also have to think with the arrival of Kapanen, the UFA Connor Sheary likely does not return, of course. Uh, you know, he was reacquired from the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, certainly some question marks around him, but you also think of it, he's another player who very well might not be back for Pittsburgh. And obviously they're expected to make some changes on the blue line as well. But you know Jim Rutherford is not done here. He's certainly going to be making a lot of moves. Like Kyle Dubas is going to be extremely busy, but he's already given up Hollander in a first round pick. So he's not going to have a lot of future prospects and picks here to really play around with for making additional acquisitions. But you know there's going to be plenty more moves with the Penguins organization. But there's certainly lots of expendable pieces in Pittsburgh for Rutherford to move around. Uh, try to find some cap flexibility to really improve that blue line. Well, of course, moving Matt Murray is going to be paramount. Of course, as we mentioned before, there's been already reports that there's all kinds of conversations happening around Murray. Rutherford said he's getting a ton of interest. Uh, so clearly, there's lots of teams out there looking to address their goaltending. It's just a matter of who's going to pony up the best deal. Of course, we saw the cap and trade kind of be a little, a little bit of a surprise yesterday. Wouldn't be completely shocking to see a Murray trade happen sooner or later as well, especially as these NHL teams are being eliminated from the playoffs. And they clearly are looking to go into offseason mode here rather quick since it's going to be a quick turnaround getting to the 2020-21 NHL season as well. So let me know what other moves you think Toronto and Pittsburgh are going to make here before too long. They're both expected to be extremely busy. They both have a lot of players that are kind of known as your, your usual suspects here in the trade rumor mill. So let me know what you think we're going to see happen here and we'll discuss further down in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.